everybody. If you are suffering from the effects of menopause, we're talking hot flashes, night sweats, and I know a whole lot more, and you're curious about HRT or hormone replacement therapy, stay with me because I'm gonna share everything I know about that and how it affected me and my journey in menopause. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure and hit the subscribe button or the bell to get notifications on my videos as we talk about aging well over the age of 50. So here are five things that you need to know about HRT, which is now commonly referred to as menopausal hormone therapy. So first of all, keep in mind, a doctor has to prescribe this to you to replenish what your body is no longer making. I get mine in the form of estrogen and progesterone. I don't do testosterone. I tried it one time, but I just didn't like the way that it made me feel. I actually had a testosterone injection. It made me kind of agitated and uh, I just didn't feel like myself, which I haven't for a while anyway. First of all, keep in mind, a doctor has got to prescribe hormones to you. A lot of you have asked about that. A lot of you have asked where I've gotten them. My midlife practitioner has prescribed those to me after we did a lot of research back and forth about what was gonna be the best treatment for me. And I have to admit that hormone therapy does have a lot of controversy attached to it. And of course, it was a big topic for me. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 44, and she went through what's called an induced or a medical menopause due to the chemotherapy that she was on and radiation. So she was thrust into menopause. We never had that conversation about it. And a lot of doctors were really concerned about prescribing hormones to me. So I went to a midlife practitioner, as I said, and we looked and analyzed my risk and decided that this was gonna be the best course of my treatment due to the severity of the symptoms that I was dealing with. So there are two types of hormones, there are bioidentical and there are synthetic hormones. Now this is according to the FDA, natural or what are called bioidentical hormones, which are what I am on, are not necessarily any safer than regular hormones. And remember, of course, as with anything, there can be risks involved. So make sure you talk to your doctor about what is best for you, because all that depends on your medical history and your body. I want to keep that in mind. Just because this is something that I'm doing, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be right for you or your body would react the same way, because for sure, if there's anything I've learned in menopause, it is not a one size fits all. So in my case, I was having very severe symptoms when it came to menopause. And at that time, I didn't realize it. I was in perimenopause for a number Number of years. I was having hot flashes, night sweats. Moodiness was my big one though. And that's where I was actually prescribed antidepressants because they thought it was was just that that they were dealing with. And little did I know at the time, I was in perimenopause. So I was dealing with a little bit of all of it. I was seeing my body react differently. I was seeing different foods affect me. And I was definitely feeling very, very agitated and really, really tired all the time. And of course, I was doing a lot of different supplements to try and relieve that, but I was not getting too much relief, which is why I eventually started going to different doctors to figure out exactly what was going on in my body because I was, I was really scared for a long time. So I Again, I finally moved away from the gynecologist that I was going to and I found a midlife practitioner. And, and by the way, I didn't even know that that existed. I do wanna send you a resource. So if you are looking for a doctor in your area and you're not exactly sure where to go, NAMS has a list of midlife practitioners. So you can just put your zip code in and you can see if there is somebody in your area that might work for you. But I went from my gyno to the midlife practitioner and I went to a few different doctors at the time. We did different blood tests and then we came down to figuring out what was gonna be best for me. So I will admit, I still do a lot of different supplements just because I don't necessarily know if the bioidentical hormones do everything for me. I still get hot flashes, I still get night sweats, and I still have problems sleeping sometimes. I'm on the lowest dose of the estrogen patch, and I'm gonna show that to you, which I just put on right above my hip, and I do that. I change it out twice a week. It stays on, it sticks on. I don't know what kind of glue it has, but it sticks on whether I'm in the shower or not, and it's a bioidentical, and then I also take a progesterone pill each night. Again, I tried testosterone just one time, but it made me super, super irritable, so I did not continue doing that. And again, when it comes to bioidentical, that basically means that it has the same chemical or structure of the hormones that my body was making. It does not seem to have too many of uh, anymore. So when it comes to natural, it means that the hormones come in the um, form of a plant or animal sources, but it doesn't necessarily mean they don't make them in a lab. Okay, so you may decide that you want this, you don't want it, or you're scared of it. And trust me, I completely understand because I was for a very, very long time. You really do have to figure out what is best for you and what kind of symptoms you're dealing with. There are 34 
and I think 34 plus symptoms of menopause. So if those are the symptoms that you're trying to treat, you have to decide what form of therapy and or supplementing is gonna be best for you. So let me talk about some of the other things that I'm also doing. I try to work on my diet overall. I try to reduce sugar because that inflames the inside of my body. And I think that I feel more hot flashes as a result of having sugar. And I also feel like I sweat a whole lot more with that and I don't sleep as well. So that's one thing, reducing sugar, trying to cut it out to feel less sluggish. I'm also trying to make sure I get in bed at the same time every night, even if I'm not falling asleep. I wear sleeveless clothes to bed so I don't have to get up and down and up and down. I keep the thermostat very low, despite the fact that it makes my husband a little bit crazy. And I use a primrose oil as well for the hot flashes and of course my handy neck fan. By the way, if you're learning something new, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button or let me know in the comments what you didn't know about menopausal hormone therapy or maybe what you're doing that's working right now. Okay, finally, since a lot of our moms didn't talk about it, I wanted to make sure that I stopped using the word taboo and that I am out there talking about it. If you can believe this, 2.2 million women every single year are entering menopause. So they're dealing with all of these symptoms. Globally, 1 billion women are gonna be in menopause by the year 2025. So the numbers really are staggering. And so many of these women are in the workplace as well, dealing with all of these symptoms. So if you think you have some or all these symptoms, or if you have any questions, leave them below. I'm also going to be interviewing experts so we can talk a little bit about everything. And I also want to suggest a few things that you may want to ask your doctor. So take a look at this. First of all, you may want to talk to your doctor about whether or not you've had your period in the last 12 months because it might be on, off, on, off. That's what I was dealing with. So that restart happens and it has to be 12 months since your last period. That's when you know that first day after that happens, 12 months, you know that you're in menopause. Second, if you're talking about doing any kind of menopausal hormone therapy, ask what the side effects would be. Third, ask what possible risks you would have. Fourth, I'd find out whether or not there's something else you should be doing instead. Is there another supplement that you think may work better for you? And number five, of course, I want to make sure you know you're not alone in this. Trust me, we have all been there. A lot of us are still there and we feel like that from day to day. So this is the menopause journey. This is not a disease. This is a transition. This is going to be for a long time. So I felt like it was really important for me to get out and talk about it so you don't feel like you're alone in this journey. By the way, I'm also going to list some of the resources down below that I have talked about, I have learned from, just in case you need them. And please feel free to do the same. I'd love to hear what's also working for you as well. If you're in midlife and you're feeling stuck and not sure what to do next, you can download my guide. It's a free Unlock Your Bold guide. It has five steps for activating your inner bold so you can achieve your next chapter. And if you like this video, be sure and like and subscribe so you can get more of them. I'll see you next time.